I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? This is Matt Twin Studio. Welcome back to another review. This is another request for Albin, and it is for the 1978 film Coma. Now, if anyone's ever interest, interested in requesting pretty much any type of video, review, movie topic, whatever video you wish, commentary, I could do my best with it. I'm not good at them. But you can send the request directly to my PayPal or by joining my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. If not, no worries. But if so, thank you so much. But Coma is a film I had heard of for a long time. And, of course, directed by Michael Crichton. Now, Michael Crichton, of course, most well known as an author. Jurassic Park, among many others. But I first took notice of him as a director because he directed a personal favorite of mine called Runaway with Tom Selleck. Funny enough, Tom Selleck has a small little role in this. Which I guess that's the first time those two met. And then later on would make Runaway in 1984 or so. But I love Runaway. Personal favorite of mine. It has a Blu-ray release. But I don't know. I don't think it has a Blu-ray release in the US. I'm not sure. It seems like any Blu-ray release is overseas. But I'm not sure in the US it has it. <clears throat> but this... Really what this reminded me of is a film that came out much later called Extreme Measures with Hugh Grant and Gene Hackman. Not the exact plot, but certain medical mixed in with thriller. And then you have a doctor that finds out there's a lot more going on with these people that are pronounced dead and they're being used. Granted, the usage is for different reasons, but a lot of people don't like Extreme Measures. I actually rather enjoy that one. I think it's underrated and it's one of Hugh Grant's best performances. One of the few times you really got to be more serious, you know, in a thriller aspect, which was very rare. Because usually it's put into comedies. But this one, it was a decent film. I mean, Genevieve Bujol, probably butchered her name, which I believe she was one of the front runners for Captain Janeway, a stretch of Voyager. But then something didn't work out. They got Kate Mulgrew. She stars as a doctor that seems very much honed in on her profession. She has this on again, off again boyfriend, played by Michael Douglas. And one thing leads to another, and her best friend is pronounced brain dead and comatose after this supposed to be a routine abortion. And then She's wondering what the hell's going on. What happened? This is routine. Starts looking into stuff. Wait a minute. There's these people. They were perfectly fine. But then they're pronounced brain dead and comatose as well. It was fun seeing this movie to watch the recognizable people show up. Of course, Michael Douglas is one of the main roles as the boyfriend and later ally of our lead character. Tom Selleck is a patient. And later his character becomes one of the 
coma patients. Ed Harris makes an appearance as one of these two pathology guys who she's asking, how would a patient, how would you kill a patient or put them into a coma? How would you put them in a coma? And they both spin ideas with her as I, and then the other guy, not Ed Harris, but the other guy mentions carbon monoxide. Uh, Lance Legault, who I remember as Decker from the A-Team TV show. He was also in, God, it's a PM Entertainment film. I forget what it was. I want to say it was, I reviewed it not, uh, a month or two ago for Rich. I forgot what it was, but it had Dennis Christopher in it. So, and Jess Gallia. I think Lance Legault was in that. He plays an assassin, a killer. I'm like, oh shit, I, he's from the A-Team. It was Decker. I'm a bit A-Team TV show fan. Also, Rip Torn has an appearance in this. Listen, it was nice to see some of these recognizable people. And granted, I think it does hurt. It's not the movie's fault, but it, it hurts... And the fact that this is my first time watching this, but I've seen other films later on do this type of subject material. So maybe it's not as strong of an impact to me as maybe it did back in the day for people who first saw this. But you know, the medical terminology seem, I'm not an expert, but they seem, they don't seem too bullshit. <laughs> the look of the film is perfectly fine. The actors do their jobs well. Nice to see Michael Douglas, who I do enjoy as an actor and in strong early role. I say it was fun to say, oh, there's Tom Selleck, there's Ed Harris. What you find out, spoiler alert, is it all deals with black market organ sales. Which honestly, it reminded me, again, this came out much later, but the ambulance, which was people detained this ambulance, and then you find out these were black market organs. And I like that movie better than this. It's not that this is a bad movie, there's really nothing wrong with the movie. At least, that I'm sure more articulate seasoned vets of critics criticisms and went to school for eight years they could probably get the ins and outs of whether the story the plot the plot holes the plot lines the plots upon plots me i'm just a guy sitting in a chair watching a movie it was interesting enough to see her journey into what is going on I like some of the look of the film like I mentioned that's that bad looking film there's a moment which hell it's in the posters where all these people are hanging from these wires definitely a intriguing visual look I like that Michael Douglas has something to do. He's not fucking useless. He comes through at the end. I like that. Because usually... Well, if this movie was made nowadays, the guy wouldn't do shit. Or he'd be the bad guy. People say that's not fair. Well, call like I see it. But here it's like, okay, she did a lot of work. You find out what's going on. But Michael Douglas helped out too at the end. So that was nice. A, because I like Michael Douglas, and B, the guy wasn't useless. That was cool. Does it end on a stupid, downbeat, bullshit note? I just, like, compared to Extreme Measures, like, Extreme Measures, in a weird way, I felt more interested and pulled into the story because I really like the idea it poses where... Gene Hackman, first off, stronger villain. Like the villain here, uh, Richard Widmark, is all right, but Gene Hackman is Gene Hackman. And then the whole, 
if you could cure cancer by killing someone, would you do it? But if you kill one person to cure cancer, what do you do? That's the question it poses. Now, of course, critics would say that it didn't do as much as it could with it. I thought it did fine. But I really like the stream measures. So I don't even think that has a Blu-ray release. Uh, I think like a clamp, not clamshell, but one of those old school Warner Brothers DVDs. I think it was Warner Brothers. Don't quote me on that. That I don't remember what's to do. Now I'm, thinking, now I'm talking about stream measures, but that one I got a bit bored into the story. I, I don't know how else to put it. The trailers for that movie isn't that great. I think that's what hurt the film. The trailers aren't really that great for stream measures. Are you done talking about coma? I'm sorry, I'll get back to coma. It didn't put me into a coma. Believe me, there's some films I've seen lately that were close to putting me in a coma, but not this one. With Michael Crichton, I actually want to look up all the films he directed. This was a surprise hit. I, I do know that. This was a bigger hit than people thought it would. And I'm kind of surprised. Actually, let me wait on that. I was going to say I'm pretty surprised this didn't have a sequel. But it was adapted into a two-part miniseries in 2012. And it's interesting that Michael Crichton, he's known for an author you know, of all these books. And this movie that he directed is based on a book. I mean, this wasn't his first film. No, he, oh yeah, he did Westworld before this. I like Westworld. I believe I reviewed Westworld on here. I do like Westworld quite a bit. Looker, yeah. You know what? If that didn't star Albert Finney, I think it would have been better. Physical Evidence, not one of my favorite Burt Reynolds films. But I mean, novels, I mean, this guy wrote Andromeda Strain, which I do like the movie on that. I, re I know I reviewed that. Eaters of the Dead, which got turned to The 13th Warrior. The Congo, which I love the movie. Sphere, I reviewed that movie. That's a good one. He wrote the novel for that Jurassic Park. Rising Sun, I ranted on that movie recently. That's boring as hell. Disclosure, oh, he wrote the novel for Disclosure. That's right. I like the movie. Michael Douglas, funny enough, was in that. Airframe. Wonder there's a movie on that. Prey. State of Fear. Next. But not not the Nicholas Stage one. This is a novel. Talking about genetic research. Sorry, now I'm just, okay. Let me stop. But yeah, this was a big hit when it came out. I mean, it made 50 million bucks on like a $4 million budget. And this is based on a novel by Robin Cook, actually. Michael Douglas called the film the first time I've ever been offered a project with a good story laid out well, a good cast, and a good director. There you go. What is this fucking mini? There was a mini series also on this, 2012? Produced by Ridley Scott and Tony St Scott. Is this the director I'm thinking of who did. F this isn't the director I'm thinking of, is it, that did this? No, it's not. Huh. Oh, okay. It's the guy who did Hard Rain and Freezer, which I liked. He directed the miniseries. Okay, I got him confused with someone else. Huh, he directed the remake of this. A four hour, though? This movie was less than two hours and it told the whole story. Why would he need a four hour timeline for this story? 
the fuck? You don't need four hours for it. Lauren Ambrose, who the hell is that? Supporting cast, I mean, you got Gina Davis, James Woods, Alan Burstyn, Richard Dreyfus. Well, okay, why aren't they the leads? Lauren Ambrose. From Cycle Beach Party, Can't Harley Wait. TV show Six Feet Under. Okay. Wonder what the response of this. Sorry, I'm going off the bean path, but. Evoked some creepy images, but the majority of the miniseries is not believable in terms of story development, dialogue, or performances. It's different enough from the 1978 movie to have its own appeal. And the cast keeps things interesting even during plot lulls. New York Post calls it very lame and dopey. <laughs> okay. No, I'm not seeing that remake. Or uh, another adaptation of the fuck. I know this sounds stupid. Whenever I look at the poster for a split second, I keep thinking it's Princess Leia from the first Star Wars. I know that's stupid. I guess it's just the the white outfit. But I can't help it. Like when I do a quick look at the poster, I'm like, is this Princess Leia? No, it's not. Anyway, enough bumble fucking around. Coma! It's not a bad movie. It's a decent film. I, I don't think it's a film I would ever see again. It does make me want to rewatch Extreme Measures. <laughs> and, you know, there's been other medical movies, medical thrillers, but not a bad movie. I mean, at least to see some of the early folks like Michael Douglas and, oh, there's Rip Torn, there's Tom Selleck. There's Ed Harris. Not a bad movie at all. So, a decent thriller. I'm not sure what else to say other than, thanks for watching, take care, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.